the Bible tells us that one day Joshua leading the children of Israel to the promised land got to Jericho and he came face to face with a wall and the wall was saying to him thus far you can come and no further but the almighty God told him what to do to bring down the barrier I believe there's someone here tonight you are the threshold of your breakthrough and the almighty God wants to hear your shout of hallelujah God, the great I am, Alleluia, Alleluia, you are the mighty God, the great I am, Alleluia, Alleluia. King of glory, the Lord, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the Lord who has never lost a war, the Lord of hosts himself, we worship you, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for Monday. Thank you for Tuesday. Thank you for yesterday. And thank you for tonight. And thank you in advance for tomorrow. Accept our worship in Jesus' name. Even as your children's son, tonight, prove yourself. Show the whole world that you are the Almighty God. Arise tonight, Lord, and scatter all the enemies of your children. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have prayed. Amen. Let your amen be louder than that of your neighbor. Again, you're going to prophesy to one or two people and say, Neighbor, I love you. 
that my surprise from God tonight will be bigger than yours. Oh, go ahead, touch two or three people. Thank you, Father. And then you may please be seated. God bless you. Of course, you know that tomorrow, this place which is already overflowing can contain us. So we'll be moving to the new auditorium tomorrow. And that, sim that simply means that this place will be the overflow tomorrow. Now, I will advise you to tell your friends, you know they will come tomorrow, there's no doubt about that, but to advise them to come early. Because even though we have millions of chairs in the new auditorium, and if you look at the monitor, the new auditorium itself is almost already full. Tell them if they want to be able to find a seat tomorrow, they must come early. This place will overflow tomorrow. The new auditorium will overflow. Tell them to come early. But um, if they come late, no problem. They can always sit on the floor because even the floor will be anointed. But tomorrow, we'll be ministering from the altar at the new auditorium. Now, good news. <laughs> Today, 40 more babies have been born. Seven boys, seven girls. <laughs> Bringing the total to 49. 21 boys and 28 girls. So the girls are still leading. Let the girl shout, praise the Lord. And let the boy shout, hallelujah. Don't worry, boys, we will catch up, don't worry. <laughs> and then, concerning sanitation. Sure, you wonder why do we talk about sanitation? Because the camp of God must be absolutely clean. The Bible says your God is walking in the midst of you, and He must not see any unclean thing in your midst. So the neatest, as of tonight, is Cross River Province 1, followed by Lagos Province 13, followed by Ogun Provinces 2 and 16. Huh. The yes. number three from the bottom, is Federal Capital City, <laughs> Province 12. 
Number two from the bottom. Lagos Province 77. Uh, this is serious. So. At the very bottom, Oshun Province 10. <laughs> All right. Before you sleep tonight, tidy up. Because again, we will announce the results of your cleanliness as we go along. Cleanliness is next to godliness. And you know it's a practice. As you walk around, you see anything dirty on the floor, pick it up and throw it into the refuse bin that is provided all over the place. As you do so, the Almighty God will clean up your life. Tonight, we're talking on beyond deliverance. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, from verse 5 to 8. Acts 8, 5 to 8. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached. Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed and there was great joy in that city there's going to be great joy here tonight if you believe me your amen will be louder now when we talk of when we talk of deliverance we are basically talking about freedom from demons freedom from demonic forces freedom from anything that has to do with the devil. And the demonic forces could be just one. Like in Mark chapter 1 from verse 23 to 27. Mark 1 23 to 27. And it's interesting that God called demons unclean spirit. So there's a link between dirtiness and demons. The demons could be more than one. Like in Luke chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3. Luke 8, 1 to 3. It talks about Mary Magdalene who had seven demons only. Or the demons could be thousands. Like in Mark chapter 5, from verse 2 to 13, Mark 5, from verse 2 to 13, talking about the madman of Gadara. In his own case, he had a legion of demons. But whether the demons are one, seven, or thousands, 
There is someone who is called the Deliverer. And I'm sure you know his name. Uh, let him hear you shout his name. So when we talk about deliverance, basically we're talking about deliverance from unclean spirits, from demonic forces. But deliverance offers you much more than just freedom from demons. It offers you freedom from harmful habits. For example, in Mark chapter 5, verse 5, Mark 5, verse 5, talking about the madman of Gadara, the Bible said he was always cutting himself stones. He was doing something that was destroying him. That's why you find people who have found out that without any doubt, smoking is dangerous, it can kill. But they keep on smoking. You find a doctor smoking. I think on one occasion they ask a doctor, you know this thing can kill. And you are still doing it. He said, yes. He said, man is going to die by something anyway. So he said, if he's going to die by enjoyment, he calls smoking enjoyment. He said, what's the problem? And believe me honestly, deliverance can deliver you from adultery and fornication, destructive habits. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 17, the Bible may declare, if we defile the temple of God, God will destroy you. And he said, your body is the temple of God. Deliverance can give you freedom from wrong association, wrong company. The madman of Gadara was living in the graveyard, keeping company with the dead. It will interest you to know that in Proverbs 21 verse 16, Proverbs 21 verse 16, the Bible says that a backslider is living in the congregation of the dead. If you are backsliding, you are remaining in the congregation of the dead. Which is why when it is altar call time tonight, if you know you are backsliding, run away from the company of the dead. Come back to God. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. First Corinthians 15, verse 33 tells us that evil communication corrupts good manners. That means you're fellowshipping with the wrong kind of people, you will soon become like them. The elders have a saying, the sheep that is fellowshipping with dogs, we eat feces. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, Proverbs 13, verse 20, tells us clearly that if you walk with wise people, 
you'll be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. If your friends are fools and you keep on associating with them, the Bible says destruction is waiting. But deliverance offers you more than that. It offers you a restoration of your destiny. Before you were born, God had a plan for your life. He said, before I formed you, I knew you. When you were you are still in your mother's womb, I had already set you apart for a purpose. But there are many people coming to the world and uh, they deviate. And their destiny becomes truncated. But deliverance can restore your destiny. For example, in the case of the madman of Gadara we were talking about, nobody would have thought that that madman was born to be an evangelist. But when deliverance came, and he said, oh Lord, I will go with you wherever you go. The Lord said, no, go and fulfill your purpose. The purpose is to be an evangelist. I have good news for somebody here tonight. Your destiny that is being truncated shall be fully restored. Some of you have heard the story before of a young man, brilliant young man, a student of medicine at the University of Ibadan. His father fought with another man. It wasn't there when they were doing their fighting. And the other man placed a curse on the father and said, by the time I finish with you, Nobody will remember you ever came to this world. Incidentally, deliverance can take you out of any family curse. So let me use the opportunity of tonight to say that if there are any generational curse in your family, by the authority of the one who is called the all-sufficient God, I destroy it. And as soon as that man pronounced the curse, less than two weeks later, the man he fought with died. So all the children came home to bury their dad. And the eldest of the children had just returned from Germany and bought a new car. On the way after the burial of the father, the car had an accident and the boy died. They brought the news back home. The mother heard the news, collapsed, and died. The children came to bury their mother. On their way back, another accident, and the eldest sister in the family died. And on and on. Until one day, the man who placed the curse saw this young man the last one left, 
student at the University of Ibadan, College of Medicine. I said, ah, there remains one. This one is still living. Before I kill this one, I will torture him a bit. I decree today that that sworn enemy of your family, by the time you get back up, he will be gone. So he did something, and the boy became crazy. Got back to the campus, gathered all his books together, and all his clothes, and set them on fire. Of course, they took him to Sakati Hospital, and loaded him with drugs, and they said he cannot go back to school. But he has burnt all his property, so he went home to see if he could get some money from his father's farm. And that man saw him again. Oh, you are still around? He had the petrol to the fire. The boy returned to the hospital, to, to the campus, and things got worse. To cut a long story short, after a long while, Something told that boy, your case is not natural. It's not for drugs. You need to come in contact with a lot of hosts. So they brought him to this camp. By the time you, we saw him, his eyes were crimson red because he had not been able to sleep for days. the special grace of God, he gave his life to Jesus. The Almighty God intervened. And somehow, we were able to support him, and he finished his doctorate degree. Today, he's an evangelist. I decree to someone here listening to me, as a result of what God will do in your life tonight, you will fulfill destiny. But deliverance offers you more. If you read Exodus chapter 12, from verse 30 to 32, Exodus 12, 30 to 32. When God was delivering Israel from Egypt, Pharaoh said something, go and serve God as you wish. Deliverance gives you the ability and the means to serve God as you wish. For example, deliverance makes available to you the wealth that you need to serve God. I know there are some people here who would love to build a church for God once every year. It's only they don't have the means. I am decreeing tonight that the power to do whatever you want to do for God easily you receive it or not. It was deliverance 
that turned Mary Magdalene to a divine treasurer. Poverty is a curse. Prosperity is a blessing. That's one of the reasons why the devil does not like, I mean, does not like anything that will cause you to prosper. I'm telling you, poverty is not good. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. I have been poor. By the grace of God, I'm not that poor anymore. I have known what it is to walk barefooted till you reach the age of 18. That's not good. Poverty is a curse. And today, in the name of the one who saved my soul, in the name of the one who called me, I decree, poverty will become a stranger to you. The Almighty God say it is to sinners that God has ordained travail to struggle I have nothing to show for it. You're working hard, working like an elephant and eating like an ant. That is not God. What your God says is, I wish above all things that will prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. If there's anyone who should be doing very well, it is someone whose soul is prospering. If you're a true child of God, doing the will of God, you shouldn't lack. Poverty is a curse. And poverty will become a stranger to your family. Oh, I'm sure some of you will say, but what about those people who are not Christians and they have a lot of money? Oh, sure. You study the Bible very well. The word of God says clearly the prosperity of fools will destroy them. The Bible says it is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and has no sorrow. You will prosper. And you won't know sorrow. <laughs> However, prosperity can take you much, much deeper. I've already talked about restoration of destiny. That's one of the things that you get when you are delivered. But what some of the things that I really like, like and, 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 and I won't take too long tonight because I want you to pray, is that deliverance can turn you to becoming a terror to the devil. You used to run from witches and wizards. Deliverance can turn the tide so that they will now become those who will be running away from you.
you can become someone who will be moving mountains. Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 from verse 6 to 12. Acts of the Apostles 13 from verse 6 to 12. Paul was preaching the gospel which was his life assignment. And then he saw Sarah decided to block the way. The Bible said Paul full of the Holy Spirit looked at him and said ah uh ah -uh. I am talking and you are hindering me. He said, I decree that will be blind for a while. Up to today, I didn't know why he added a while. And immediately the fellow became blind and moved out of the way. And the governor that Paul was preaching to, got converted. I know some at times when, when we pray and make some decrees, some people feel, are you not being too violent? But if somebody says, I will not reach my goal, should I allow him to stay? So I decree. Anyone who will not allow you to reach your goal shall be uprooted. One of my sons, and some of you have had this testimony before, great child of God, doing mighty things for God, was living in the same house in Ikeja. He was living in the flat upstairs, and there was this witch living in the flat below, very famous one big, big uh, officers of law were coming to her for power. And uh, my son came and told me, I said, what are you doing? You're upstairs, the devil is downstairs. Move the devil. Ah, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, you know, aren't you forgetting that the Bible says we must be as uh, gentle as a dove? I said, I see. <laughs> so if I get to my bedroom at night and I open the best sheet and one way or the other I found that a poisonous snake had found its way under the bed sheet what you're asking me to say is <laughs> oh thou creature of God uh, you're welcome uh, sleep on but uh, don't worry I will be sleeping somewhere near you is that what you will do what will you do? <laughs> so after some time, I didn't see my boy. When I saw him, there were rashes all over his body. What happened? He said the witch reported him to one of the police officers. 
that she's convinced that the boy upstairs uh, must be a highway robber that people were always coming to his place at night to discuss people were coming to pray he said they were coming to plan how they were up so the policeman arrested my boy threw him into detention it took a while before they said this fellow is always praying he can't be an arm robber when my friend my son came to me i says serve you right i'm less as a dog go back continue to be harmless as a dog with the witch on that on that ground. the next time if she's going to report you won't come out a got home and commanded mountain to move and mountain moved do i hear somebody say in the mighty name of jesus every mountain blocking my way move tonight Amen. <laughs> Amen. Don't worry. The time to pray will come. Please be seated. It's something I like much more than moving occasional mountains. Is that deliverance can move you to a level where you become a one-man army for the Lord. As you found in the text that I read to you, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, from verse 5 to 8, only one boy, Philip, went to his city when he arrived there every demon started running away single boy became an army of god flushed out all evil forces in the town the result there was great joy in the city I am believing God for you that after this convention you will visit your village you will vi visit your towns and drive out all the demons there I'm going to tell you a story and I will mention names because it's a true story anyway. The late Tori Molusi, the one before the present one, happens to be not just my son in the Lord, but my friend. And her his salvation was solid. I mean, solid. Saved, sanctified, delivered, and baptized in the Holy Spirit. So he told the people in his town, and this is a true story you can check. So be sure I'm telling you the truth. He said, now, I'm a child of God, so I'm not just an ordinary Oba, not just an ordinary traditional ruler. 
no more idol worshiping in my town. And the people laughed at him. <laughs> and at the time he was saying that the Google Festival was uh, just some weeks away. And they told him, we've been doing this before your father. Not to talk of you. We will celebrate our Google Festival. And he said, fine. We shall see. I think about three weeks to the date when the festival was to be celebrated, the high priest who would lead the celebration died. And so the people said, no problem. There's a successor. So another fellow became high priest. But 10 days or so to the celebration, the new high priest died. It was a no problem. There's somebody who can succeed that one. And so they told him, it's your turn. He said, I refuse. They said, why not? He said, the God of Orimo Lucy will kill me. I hereby decree anybody who receives any hand or foot against your God shall die. Now, so, so that we can have time to pray. What are the requirements for you to be a one-man army for God, a terror to the devil? James chapter 4, verse 7. James 4, 7. He says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Then resist the devil, and he will flee from you. He will do what? He will flee. So let, let your submission to God be total. You must be able to say, like Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 30. John 14, verse 30. He said, the prince of this world has come and has nothing in me. I am a Christian, a child of God, 100%. Nothing I did. Submit like that to God. <laughs> you receive the devil, the devil will flee. I'm a small boy. And if I'm a small boy now, you can imagine how small I was some 40 years ago. You've heard the story. About 40 years ago, the same Uri Molusi of blessed memory invited me to Ijebu Igbo for a Thanksgiving service because some of his children had returned and, uh, from abroad and they wanted to celebrate. And I went. And just as the service was about to begin, a lot of his chiefs of those days came. And they came in the regalia of their various 
courts. The usher saw them coming and they came to me and they said, Sir, are we going to allow these people into the church? I said, Of course. Put them in the front row where it will be easy for my God to reach them quickly. And I changed my sermon. I was going to preach on, Oh, that man will praise the Lord. I changed my sermon to what happened on Mount Carmel. You know what happened on Mount Carmel. I rounded up the sermon by saying, Brethren, I came here with my wife and my son in this particular car, number so and so. I said, I give you a challenge. If you can make one of my tires go flat, I will serve your God. If you can't do that, you must serve my God. Then I made the altar call. And the head chief, who incidentally also happened to be the leader of all the members of secret society, was the first to come forward. He came, and of course, when they saw the leader going, others followed. At the end of the service, Orimo Lucy said to me, yeah. I said, Kabi, see, because we were close, you know. He called me here yeah. as my initial. You saw my chief priest, uh, chief, uh, chief, uh, I, I, uh, chief uh, assistant, or the highest man next to me, coming forward when you made the altar call. I said, Kabi, see, I saw him. He said, hey, he, maybe he didn't understand what you said, though. Maybe he thought you were asking for somebody who needs uh, prayers for healing. So let's follow him up. I said, good, let's go. So we go to him. And Kabiesi said, did you know what you have just done? He said, I do. Why? He said, huh? you see a small boy like this challenging all of us. Who does not know there must be somebody behind him? When you live here, the Lord of hosts will be behind you. He said, it is the one behind him that I surrender to. Submit to God. Absolutely. And then you resist the devil. And he will flee from you. That's what the Bible says. Then if you were to be a woman army for God, you must be ready for a life of self-discipline. You must be ready for a life that will keep yourself under perfect control. In Matthew 17, from verse 14 to 21, Matthew 17, 14 to 21, there was a boy who was being tormented by a demon. And they brought him to the disciples and they couldn't cast him out. But Jesus came and threw away the demon. So later on, the disciples came to the Lord and said, Sir, why couldn't we cast him out? 
And the Lord said, well, because of for your, your own belief. And number two, because this kind does not come out except with fasting and prayer. You are my children, so I can tell you the truth. Your life must become a life of fasting and prayer. You can't be overloaded with pandemonium every time and expect the devil to take you serious. You must learn to say no to the flesh from time to time. That's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 25 to 27. 1 Corinthians 9, 25 to 27. He said, I keep my body under. Tell the body, hey, sit down. That's why you find that the redeemed Christian Church of God, one of the things you are noted for is fasting. And from time to time, I call you to fast. And some of you, of course, will be. I don't know about the rest. But in the name that's above every other name, as you follow my footsteps, you'll be greater than I. Some of you have heard this story before. Don't worry, I'm about to close. I went home to, to my village in Ifewara several years ago. I was on holidays. And when I'm on holidays, I don't think of fasting. I just, holidays means you do what you don't normally do. You rest, you eat. And I went home, my home, and they prepared me pounded yam, my favorite food, with bush meat <laughs> and combination of crop soup. And so, I, as usual, I pray before I eat. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, and God said clearly, Son, don't eat. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is my home. Nobody's going to poison me here. My people love me. My family, they love me. And I'm not fasting today, I'm on holidays. And God said again, son, don't eat. I'm confessing to you. I said, this uh, uh, I'm going to eat this one. <laughs> so I ate. I'm a human being like you now. <laughs> <laughs> Pray that God will help me. I have just finished eating when a messenger came and said, One of my elder sisters living not too far away had been struck from head to toe with smallpox. Thank God for pox is forgotten now. But in those days, it was a terrible disease. can kill you. If it doesn't kill you, it will deform you. Oh God, I ran to where my sister was when I saw her. I was shaken. And I heard God say, I told you not to eat yet. I 
ran into the back of the house, put my hand deep into my throat, and vomited in me. You don't cast out smallpox with your belly full of pandediam. Apologized to God and then came back and dealt with smallpox. Before the following morning, my sister was completely whole again. You must be willing to live a disciplined life. And of course, you don't face the devil unless you are full of the Holy Spirit. You're going to be praying tonight. One of your prayers will be that God will fill you to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. He's willing. If you are willing. In conclusion, <laughs> how can you become a terror to the devil if you are not born again? Because the Bible says clearly in First John chapter three, verse eight. First John chapter three, verse eight. It's easy that sin is of the devil. You're committing sin. He said, the devil is your owner. I said, why are you going to be commanding your owner to move? And we just slap you on the head. <laughs> I mean, you, rem <laughs> you remember Acts chapter 19, from verse 13 to 17, as 19, 13 to, to 17, when seven sons of Scrivers said to a man who had demons in him, he said, the devil will command you in the name of Jesus that uh, Paul preaches, get out. Huh. The devil said, what kind of nonsense is this? I know Jesus, if he commands me to leave, I will leave. I know Paul. Who are you? The Bible said the devil pans on them and beat them, tore their clothes. If your salvation is not genuine, I beg you tonight, come and give your life to Jesus. Because very soon we are going to be praying. And at a stage, one of our prayers will be a prayer in agreement. Those of us who are full of the Holy Spirit, those of us who are true children of the Almighty God, we are going to command every demon here tonight to get out. And believe me honestly, they are going to obey. And when the demons begin to fly out, if they find someone who has not been washed in the blood of the Lamb, they will say, ah, no problem. We are just exchanging houses. So if you have not been washed in the blood of the Lamb, if you have not been saved, if your salvation is not genuine, if you have been pretending all this while, or you are backsliding and you are dwelling in the congregation of the dead, you better run forward now and give your life to Jesus Christ so that you will be saved, the blood will cover you, and then you'll be secure when deliverance time comes. I'm going to count from 1 to 15. Before I say 15, you better come if you want to give your life to Jesus. I'm counting now. One. Two. And this is not a joking matter. 
If you are not sure of your salvation or you are backsliding, come now. No question of shame there. By the time you return, you will be a different person. If you are backsliding, come now. Three. Four. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. As you are coming, begin to pray. Begin to ask Jesus to have mercy on you to save your soul tonight. Wash you clean in his blood. Give you genuine salvation. Call on him. It's a very, very important night. Eleven. Begin to pray as you come. Call on him for the salvation of your soul. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Now, if you are still coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Get there before I finish praying. Now, those of you already in front, go ahead, talk to God. Those of you on the way, cry to him, please, Lord, have mercy on me, save my soul. I want to do your will. I don't want to have anything to do with the devil anymore. All these days that I've been serving the devil, what have I gained? I'm coming to you, Lord. Wash me clean in your blood. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I will serve you for the rest of my life. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these people and intercede for them. Let's pray that the one who saved our own souls we save their souls also. Please pray for them, brethren. Pray for them. Pray for them. Hurry up, hurry up, those of you who are out the way. Hurry up, I want to pray now, so just make sure you keep coming. Get here before I finish praying. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Savior, I want to thank you for your word. 
I want to give you all glory and honor for those who have come forward to surrender their lives to you today. Father, please receive them. Yeah. Have mercy on them. Yeah. Please save their souls. Yeah. Let your blood wash away their sins. Yeah. Receive them into the family of God. And please, Lord, don't let the devil have anything to do with them again. Amen. From now, any time they cry unto you, please answer them by fire. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 And I rejoice with those of you who have come. I want to promise you that from today, I will begin to pray for you. And so I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. The counselors will pass cards to you, which I want you to fill. Give me the information I need there quickly. And I promise you, I'll be praying for you. Now, those of you who are still on the way, keep coming. You are not late yet. Just come. The prayer I prayed is for you also. So let's fill this form very quickly. Return it to the counselors. We will wait for you before we proceed further. God bless you.
Thank you, counselors. God bless you. Now it's time to pray. First of all, you want to make sure personally that there's no unclean spirit hibernating anywhere in your system. And we're going to do that copying from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, from verse 25 to the end. Paul and Silas were chained, hands and feet. And then they began to praise God. And God has promised, when I find people who are worshipping me in spirit and in truth, He said I will pay them a visit. And when God paid them a visit, there was an earthquake that falls open every chain, falls open every prison door. You're going to spend the first five minutes tonight, and it's up to you how you use it. You're going to praise God violently. You're going to praise Him so mightily that God will locate you in this huge crowd. And when the Almighty God pays you a visit, no demon can stand. So stand on your feet and begin to praise the Almighty God like we have never done before. Praise Him in such a manner that He will know you are here. And He will pay you a visit. And when He pays you a visit, there will be something. There will be an earthquake. The ground will shake under your feet. Every prison door will be opened. Every yoke will be destroyed. Anything that should not be in your system will be forced away. Go ahead, praise him. Like you have never done. No, this is not a gentle praise thing. Praise him. Praise him. Violently. Praise Him with all your strength. Sing unto Him. Clap unto Him. Dance unto Him. Praise Him. Praise Him with all your strength.
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Bible says if a demon goes out of a man, he goes around looking for somewhere else to stay. And if he cannot find one, then he comes back to check if the old house is still vacant. And he goes out to bring seven more wicked demons than himself. You're going to pray your next prayer with everything in you and say, Father, Fill me to overflowing with the Holy Spirit so that no demon will find any place. Fill me to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Fill me, Lord, so that there be no space left for any demon to come back to. Fill me to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Fill me to overflowing, Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. I just want you to take note of all these prayers because I'm making them brief, but you are to continue after the service. You now lift your voice to the Almighty God. And this one, you pray it if you like. If you don't like, don't pray it. And say, Father, turn me to a terror to the devil. Go ahead, cry to the Almighty God. Turn me to a terror to the devil. Let me become a one-man army, terrorizing the devil. Turn me to a one-man army against the devil. Turn me to a terror for the devil. Thank you, Father. 
In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. We're going to pray now like a warrior. We're going to command that every demon in this place tonight will lose their victim. So in one accord, let's lift our voices to the Almighty God and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we command every demon here tonight to let go of their victims. Go ahead, cry to the Almighty God. We command. Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. It's a famous saying that says, charity begins at home. We're going to command now that the devil will take his dirty hands off every member of your family. So you lift your voice to the almighty God and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I hereby command Satan take your dirty hands off my family. Go ahead, cry unto the Almighty God. I command Satan in the mighty name of Jesus take your dirty hands off my family. Take your dirty hands off my business, of my ministry. Take your dirty hands off. I command you, Satan. Take your dirty hands off. Take your dirty hands off those who are precious to me. Take your dirty hands off my every member of my family. Take your dirty hands off. Every member of the redeemed present of God, Satan, I command you in the name of Jesus, take your dirty hands off. Ramoshe ke pere makatanda, ke pere moko ronde re moko shike tende re makakonde, ama moko rondra makashe ke rende re moko ronde, enke ke re moko shanto re moko shenta. Satan, take your dirty hands off. Take your dirty hands off me, of my family, of those who are precious to me. Take your dirty hands off, Satan. Take your dirty hands off my village. Take your dirty hands off my town. Take your dirty hands off my state. Take your dead hands off my nation. I command you, Satan, in the mighty name of Jesus. Take your dead hands off. Ramo ishe keke rando rumko tonda. Maingi rumko rumo kushinde kera makatanda. 
Em o coxa chorando catando. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Daddy. Mama Coronde Remo Cosheke Rende Keremo Cotonda and Cafe Keremo Cosheke Rende Remo Cotonda. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lord of hosts, one who reigns forever, one who said, let there be light, and there was light. I worship you tonight. Please accept my worship in Jesus' name. I stand before you tonight as your representative to these people and as their representative to you. You are the one who said I would decree a thing and it will be established unto me. I hereby decree tonight every one of you be free. Be free from demons. Be free from curses. Be free from harmful habits. Go and fulfill destiny. Become terrors to the devil. From now on, when the devil sees you coming, the devil will run. And you will reach your goal. You will become a mighty army against forces of darkness. And it shall be well with you. In Jesus' mighty name, I've decreed. Amen. Well, if you believe that it is done, then go ahead for two minutes. Praise the Lord. Magnify His holy name. Just bless His holy name.